If your energy, if you're not excited about something and you're not getting pulled towards that thing, it's not the right thing for you. Today, we're going to be talking about how to make important decisions that change your life. One of the things that I see with people is that they want to make decisions to change your life, but they would rather be a lot of times indecisive around what's going on in their life and making the big decisions because it's a little bit uncomfortable to start thinking about what their life could be. And there's one thing I know about humans is humans don't like to be uncomfortable and we also don't like the unknown. And so today I'm going to teach you how to go through and actually follow what you feel like you should be. And the key word here is feel like you should be doing in this world. Before we dive into that, I'm going to say this. If you've been in a situation where you thought that maybe I should make the decision towards what it is I want to do, or maybe I should make a decision of what I want to do in my relationship or what I want to do with my career, with my job or with my children, but you sit back and don't make a decision, not making a decision is still a decision. It is a decision not to make the decision. So either way you're making the decision, I'm saying decision a lot here, but either way you're making it, whether it's the decision to change your life or whether it's a decision to sit back and still continue to be afraid. And at some point in time, probably multiple times in your life, you're going to come to forks in the road, a fork in the road where if you go left versus going right, your life is going to be completely different. It will not look the same. It will not be the same. And you're going to come across multiple of those in your entire life. Like the very first one that I can think of for me that completely changed my life was my decision to hire a coach when I was 19 years old. When I hired my first coach, my first life coach, sales coach, whatever it is that you want to call him, he did a lot of different things for me. That was a fork in the road of my life where if I had not hired him based off of fear of not wanting to spend the money because you know I paid $350 a month in rent at a time. He cost me $500 a month. I didn't have the money. I put it on a credit card. If I had made a fear-based decision of not using him and not actually hiring him, my life would be a completely different part, a point than what it is right now. I'm 100% sure of that. And I'm sure there's, there's multiple parts in your life where you can think of a fork in the road that popped up. Maybe it's Hey, should I, uh, should I see if this person wants to go on a date with me? Maybe it's, should I follow this career path? Maybe it's, should I quit my job? Maybe it's, should I break up with this person? There's a lot of different points in your life where they are forks on the road and life will bring those to you. But the beautiful thing about that is we can also bring those forks in the road to ourselves. And I think that this is a very important part when we're talking about making a decision. The decision should be a fork in the road and you should be able to create multiple forks in the road for yourself versus having the universe come to you. Having the universe come to you could be another thing of like, you know, maybe you have a heart attack and you have a heart attack and you have a decision of, obviously the, the, the decisions that I've made in my past, the things that I've eaten, my lack of working out, how I take care of myself led me to that heart attack. And I have a fork in the road of I can either continue down this path and continue down bad health, or I can make a decision of I'm going to change myself. I'm going to change my life and I'm going to step into a new version of me. That is a fork in the road, but we can also create that fork, like not wait for that fork, but create the fork anytime that we want to. And today I'm going to teach you how to create that fork in the road. And I'm going to teach you how to follow the path, which is the path that you're truly supposed to be going on. Not the one that's based in fear or based in your mind, but based in your heart, based in your gut of this is what I'm supposed to do. And one thing that I'm going to give you a tip that will help you out with this is to get an old school pen and paper and to write things down as we go through this, to write it down. So if I talk about something and a decision pops up in your life, write that decision down and start to work through this process that I'm going to take you through because I'm going to take you through a process and I'll give you an example. I'll give you a couple of examples, but let's say you have a job that you have and it's okay. It's not bad. You don't hate your job, but you're not in love with your job. You know, it pays the bills. Your boss is pretty nice. The people that you work with are okay. Maybe you've got a friend or two that you go to lunch with, but your energy is not there for this job. And that's the important part is and the part I want to dive into is the energy around the job. The most important thing that you can do. And the biggest lesson I want you to get from today is your energy around things. And if something gives you energy, if it's neutral or if it takes energy away from you. Uh, the most important thing that you can think about when we go through this is if your energy, if you're not excited about something and you're not getting pulled towards that thing, it's not the right thing for you. 
So let me say that again. If you don't feel like you're being pulled towards something, it's not the right thing for you. Your energy is your invisible guide to where you should be going in life. Your energy is your invisible guide that if you pay attention to it, it will tell you what's right for you. It'll tell you what's wrong for you. And a lot of people, when I say go with your gut feeling, they're like, I don't know what my gut feeling is. I don't know what that feels like. I don't know what that is. It's just an easy way to break it down and to boil it down even more simple is what does your energy feel like whenever you think about this, whenever you feel into your body as to this decision that I need to make, whether it's God or whether it's the universe, whatever it is, I believe that the universe speaks through energy because everything in the world is made of energy. I'm made of energy, you're made of energy, the, uh, the microphone that I'm speaking to is made of energy, the countertop that I'm sitting at is made of energy, the camera that we're recording this and putting it up on YouTube and all over Instagram and Facebook, all of that is just energy. And so the universe speaks in energy. How can we get better at listening to it? So let's dive into it. If we're talking about job, we'll use job as the, the first example, right? When you think about your job, what is your energy towards that job that you have? Is it something that you feel like you're being pulled towards? Or does it feel like something that you have to force yourself to go do? If you're being pulled towards it, it's the right thing to do. If you feel like there is force on your side, then it's not the right thing for you to do. Whenever there is force, that means that you are acting out of accordance with the laws of the universe. Everything should be pulled towards you. If we look at your job and we break it down, think about this for a second. What's the benefit of you staying at your job? There's probably a couple of them. You can pay your bills. You can make sure you, maybe you could go on a couple trips each year because you have a little bit extra money. Uh, you can feed your children. There's benefits to having a job, right? But if I ask you the question, if you, if you see yourself, if you fast forward five years, because if we're all lucky enough, we're all gonna be here in five years. But if you fast forward in five years from today, right now, and you think about yourself still working that job, what does your energy feel like when you think of yourself working that job? Are you like, yes, that's exciting. I can't wait to be there and maybe get a couple of promotions and maybe do whatever it is that you do. Are you excited about that? What does your energy feel like thinking about going into that job five years from today? What does your energy feel like when you wake up each morning, you get ready, you get dressed, you get inside of your car and you drive to work? And maybe you're not driving to work. Maybe you're on all Zoom calls now. What does it feel like when you have to sign into those Zoom calls to see the people that you're around? Is it excitement? Is it, hell yes, this is great. I can't wait to go to work. I can't wait to see these people. I can't wait to see my boss. How is it? And you guys know, if you've been listening to me for long enough, is it a yes or is it a no? If it's not a yes, it's automatically a no. And so that's what you should be paying attention to. If you didn't have that job though, how would you pay the bill? So if you're sitting there and you're going, you know what, my energy, I don't feel pulled towards this job. I don't feel pulled towards doing this thing. Okay, well, if you fast forward five years from now and everything goes perfect over the next five years and you're not at that job anymore, what would be the perfect thing for you to be doing? What would make you excited? What would you feel pulled to, to do every single day? And I'll give you an example. Maybe you, um, maybe you make jewelry. It's just something you do on the side and maybe you make some jewelry and you go to some farmer's markets and you sell some jewelry on the side. And I ask you this question, if you fast forward five years and you're working your job in five years, or you have spent five years building a jewelry company and you, you, you build the jewelry that you want, it makes you feel like if it's a creative outlet, you sell it on Etsy, you sell it on uh, you know, the farmer's markets, maybe you have a couple pop-up shops, which one of those two things gives you more energy? Which one do you feel more pulled towards? Is it towards working the job that you currently have in five years? Or for this example, towards having a jewelry store that you've been working at for the past five years? And if you didn't go to your job and you had an extra 40 or 50 hours a week, would you now be excited to put 40 or 50 hours a week into your jewelry company, into mastering the markets, marketing side of it and growing your Instagram and growing your Etsy? How does your energy feel towards spending instead of 50 hours a week at your job, 50 hours a week on your jewelry company, or maybe your podcast, or maybe your coaching company, or maybe your consulting company, or maybe your paintings that you've been doing? How does your energy feel with the two of those? So when this is a fork in the road. It's either your job or it's this jewelry company. You can create the fork by making a decision that you're gonna figure out which one that you want. Which one do you feel more pulled to? And the reason why I'm saying pulled towards is because of this. 
if you have ever heard of something called the heliotropic effect, heliotropic effect, what that means is if you go outside and you look outside, all of the plants are always going to grow towards the sun. And the reason why is because the sun is what gives the plants energy. So the heliotropic effect is everything in this universe grows towards that which gives it energy. So if you're trying to go for a path of growth, where are you getting the most energy? You're getting the most energy from your current job or are you getting the most energy from going and deciding that you're going to start this, this jewelry company and you're all in on it? Which one gives you more energy? Because you're literally getting signs from the universe of what it is that you're supposed to be doing. The question is, are you listening to those signs from the universe? Are you growing towards your job? Are you growing towards the jewelry company? That is the heliotropic effect. Are you paying attention? Once again, heliotropic effect. Everything grows towards that which gives it energy. What are you being pulled towards doing? Let's give another example. Let's, let's say that the job isn't a decision. You, you're pretty happy with your job or maybe you've got your own company and you're excited about it. Let's talk about your uh, romantic relationship, right? If you think, you know, how does it feel? I don't want to use the word think. How does it feel to fast forward five years from today and know that you're still in a relationship with that person? How does your energy feel? Does it feel like this is where I'm supposed to be pulled towards? Does it feel like I'm gonna get growth from here? Does it feel like this person will bring out the best in me and I will bring out the best in them? Or is it different? How does your energy feel when you're around this person? Are there times when you're like, you know what? I think I'd rather be alone. Are there times when they, you know, when they leave town and you're like, God, at least I get some free time? which there's nothing wrong with being alone and getting free time. But is it more of like, finally, do you get that feeling? When they give you a call, how's your energy feel? Does it feel like, oh, I don't really wanna to talk to them right now? How's your energy feel when they give you a call? How's your energy feel when you think about spending time with them? How does your energy feel when you stop spending time with them and they leave the room? Are you, you know, exhausted? Are you energized by being around this person because that's the universe trying to tell you whether you should or should not be with that person and that is you deciding to make a fork in the road is this somebody is this a relationship that i'm holding on to for, for so long just because of the fact that we have so much history and i'm afraid of what it would look like to be single again oh my god i haven't been single in so long i don't even know how to be single so i'll just go ahead and i'll stay in this relationship because it's pretty good do you want to just live a life that's pretty good no, we're all here because we want to live a life that's amazing, that feels like we're thriving in it, right? So when you look at your romantic relationship, does it give you energy? Does it make you a better person? Are you growing towards that person? Is that person growing towards you? Are you both beneficial for each other? Where is the energy and how does the energy feel when you start to think about that? Let's give another example. Maybe you're in a relationship, maybe you're not, but you have friendships. When you think about your friendships that you have, how is your energy towards those people when you're around them? If you think about being friends with somebody in five years from today, is your energy excited? Oh my gosh, this person brings out the best to me. They motivate me. They inspire me. They want the best for me. I can't wait to see where we are five years from today because we continue to keep pushing each other. Is that how you feel? Or is it like, oh God, I can't imagine spending another five years with this person because your energy is trying to tell you the right thing. Your energy is that gut feeling. And I always say your gut feeling is your emotional compass. You need to listen to it. It's trying to tell you where you should go in your life. So if you fast forward five years, how's your excitement towards them? Same thing with the relationship. When they give you a call and you pick up your phone and you see your phone ringing and it says, John, are you like, hell yeah, I can't wait to talk to John because John always makes me feel better after phone calls. Or is it like, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit the silence button. I'm not even going to hit the cancel button because he's know that I canceled the, the phone call early. I'm going to hit the silence button so that therefore he doesn't know and he thinks that maybe I just missed his call. You know, if you go over and you spend 30 minutes with John, do you feel amazing after? Do you feel inspired after? Or do you feel like, God, that's just like an energy suck. How do you feel after spending time with these people? And you can think about each relationship in your life. You can think about John, you can think about Stacy, you can think about Nancy, you can think about each person. And you can start to get an idea of where your energy says that you should and should be, shouldn't be spending your time. If you think about, you know, a, a lady that's in your office and, you know, I always give Nancy, Nancy in accounting is the example I always give. If you think of Nancy in accounting and you're like, yeah, yeah, I get no energy. My energy just drops from being around that person. And my energy, your energy will change. Here's the interesting part about it is you don't even have to be around that person. Your energy will change by thinking about that person. Your energy will change when that person walks into the room and you see them. That will give you an idea of who you are and are not supposed to be spending your time with. When you think about 
another fork in the road, having children. When you think about having children, maybe you're at this fork in the road of like, ah, I'm getting older. I don't know if I should, if I shouldn't. Well, when you fast forward five years and think about having kids in five years, is that like, oh my God, that's exciting. I can't wait to, to be at their baseball games and to see them grow up and to change diapers and do all the things that the parents have to do. Are you excited about that? Or are you like, oh yeah, I don't really want to be doing those things, but my mom's on my ass all the time. So maybe I should have kids. What it, what's your energy towards, towards having children? Because it's the universe trying to tell you like, hey, this is right or hey, this isn't right. And so you need to start paying attention to what it is that gives you energy. And when you think about having the gut feeling, just think about how your energy feels. And once again, it can be, it can be pulled towards something. It can be pushing away towards something, or it can be somewhat neutral sometimes, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but you should think about if neutral is what you want. Neutral means that it's not bad. It's not good, but it's just okay. And maybe it's not the right thing for you. Maybe you can develop it into the right thing for you and you just haven't been putting enough time into it. Or maybe it's just like, you know what? The rest of my life, I'm only going to be around people, do things, have a job and spend the hours of my life while I'm awake towards something that gives me energy, towards something that pulls me towards it. I always say success and happiness and joy and all those things should not be hard. What makes it hard is that number one, we think too much about it and we question ourselves too much. And number two is we don't pay attention to what our energy is when we think about those things. Your energy is constantly giving you clues as to what's right for you, what's wrong for you, and how you should make adjustments. And so this is the example of how to actually create the fork in the road because the universe is always speaking to you at all points in time. The question is, are you listening to it? If you listen to it, you can, you might have to make some hard decisions, but you will always be making the decisions that are the biggest, most life-changing decisions towards what it is that you're supposed to be doing in this world. So what does your energy feel like whenever you're making these decisions? Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. If you want to learn even more about mastering your mind, click right here and watch this video as well. If you were already the person that could create the success that you want, you would have already had that success. So what we're getting down to is that it's you that needs to change.